to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Charlotte and I am a fourth grade science and social studies teacher in Arizona. Today's video is going to be a teacher haul. I love watching these because I love getting ideas of what other people buy for their classrooms and then I go out and buy it. So I thought I would just share this with you. All right, you guys, so I have been doing a little bit of shopping um, here a little bit in the summer and um, so I have just picked up a few things for my classroom that I thought I would share with you. So um, I've been to Target Home Goods and most importantly, Amazon. So I'm gonna show you just a couple things. Um, I am in my seventh, almost eighth year of teaching, um, and so every year I tend to buy a little bit less and less and less, um, and I realize the things that I actually need, and I always pick up a few little extra like fun things. So I'm just gonna show you guys everything I have accumulated right now, because I'm gonna get ready to pack up the car, and um, I would rather not have everything like in shopping bags. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is just this really fancy supply box. <laughs> um, I was actually out at Target with my mother-in-law and I remembered that I had one less black supply bin um, in my classroom than I plan on having groups. So I actually had to grab one. It doesn't match the other ones, but as long as it's black, it's okay. I will uh, get used to it. I'm kind of one of those really obnoxious people that like has to have everything match. Otherwise it'll drive me crazy. So we'll see if I can handle that one not matching. This one's like a matte black. The other ones are shiny. I know I'm crazy. I'm not gonna apologize. Um, so the next things I'm gonna show you are from Home Goods, and I'm actually gonna go to Home Goods today before I go into my classroom. But I saw these pillows, and I thought that they were just so cute for a classroom. So um, I have two little bucket seats, I guess, um, saucer chairs in my library, as you guys saw if you watched my last classroom setup vlog. Um, but these are just little pillows. Hi, dear. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Valdez. Goodbye, Mr. Valdez. Um, and so I picked up two of these. They kind of match. This one says, treat people with kindness. And I just thought that was so cute. And I can just plop it in that little saucer chair. And then, and I think these were $6, $9.99, which is kind of expensive for a pillow if you think about it. But I thought they were so cute and I needed to update my pillows. My pillows are like in tragic, so. And then the next one is, a little kindness can change the world. I just thought these were so, so cute and they match my theme. The theme of my classroom is really just black and white and lots of colors. <laughs> so perfect for this chair or for this uh, pillow. Um, so anyway, those were at Home Goods um, or TJ Maxx, whichever one you guys have. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna jump into Amazon, which is where I did the bulk of my shopping. Um, so just a few things. Um, first thing are these postcards for students. They're so cute. I'm going to drop links down in the description box below, but they're called teacher student postcards. And these are so cute. I don't usually do stuff like this, but last year I found myself writing a lot of little notes and actually a handwritten note home is one of my dojo store rewards. So I thought I would just pick a few of these up just so that I could put my little positive notes on them, but they're cute. They say, you are a quality student. You are really guac. You really guac. Like, you rock. Um, you're a spectacular student. They're so cute. Uh, this one says, thanks for giving it your very best. And it's a little bear. Uh, these say, I appreciate all you do. And then this one says, your effort is otter this world. So I just thought those were really cute. It came with, how many is in here? 96, six different designs. Um, so I feel like this will get me through the whole school year. I really love um, trying to promote positivity with kids and not just contact parents when there's something negative going on. So I bought those to try to help myself really stay on top of sending more positive notes home. So anyway, that was the first Amazon find. And then, okay, now this next thing is not a necessity. It's not something that I go out and buy every year. It's definitely something that is not needed, but I strive to create a classroom envi environment that is fun, inviting, and supports learning. So mostly fun. Um, so I got a skylight and um, my friend Mandy's son Aiden had one of these in his bedroom 
and I had purchased one last year. It's like a little small circular light. You take the lid off and then it's supposed to project the night sky into onto the ceiling. Well, it doesn't really project that far and the room is big, so it's not going to work. Um, so I'm thinking I'm gonna bring that one home and use this one in my classroom. When I walked into Aiden's room, literally looked like this. The entire ceiling was lit up. This thing was like $60 which I'm hoping it will work, and if it doesn't, I might send it back because $60 for something to not do what I want it to do, kind of pricey. But anyway, you sit it in the corner and it projects the night sky onto the ceiling, and it does multiple things. Um, now I know some of you might be thinking, well, Charlotte, what about your students with sight vi or vision impairments or um, with who have seizures, things like that? I always, always check with students, with parents to make sure that something like this is not going to harm them or cause them any type of issues, anxiety, um, trigger them in any way. So last year I did have a student who had a light or a, a vision impairment and she did have seizures. So I do have a lot of lights in my classroom already. So I did reach out to that parent. She told me, you know, the lights really aren't what caused the seizures. So she should be fine as long as it's not like flashing right in her eye. She should be good. So since this projects onto the sky, it should be fine. I like to use lights like these during like independent work time or during projects or labs when I just like to make the environment just like a party. Um, I like having lights, I like sound or music, and the kids work so well when all this is going on and they just have a lot more fun doing their labs, working in groups when the environment is like a party. It makes them feel like they're at a party. So anyway, the skylight, we'll see if it works. I'm gonna test it out today, we'll see in this vlog. And then the next thing that I purchased is a book and it's called Cracking Up. Hi baby! My little guy is coming in. Hi, sweetie. Don't move my stuff, okay? You can say hi and then need you go with daddy. Hey, buddy, baby. Yes. Thank you. Um, so this book is called Cracking Up, A Story About Erosion. I thought this would be a fun read aloud for my students. Not just that, but for something for them to pull, um, to look at and read when we're studying earth science and they need something to look at or um, you know, just something fun. I like to keep picture books in my classroom and anything that is science related is always good. So this one's called Science Works Cracking Up A Story About Erosion. So that's another Amazon find. And then the next thing that I purchased from Amazon, now this is definitely a necessity and I buy it every year. These are thermal laminating pouches. And there are two hundreds in here. They're three milliliter, millimeter, sorry, <laughs> three millimeter, um, nine by 11.5. So lots of laminating to be done. I like to laminate uh, classroom decor and certain things that the kids make. Okay, so the next purchase from Amazon is definitely not a necessity, but something I really have been eyeballing for a while. And these are, <laughs> These are Miss Frizzle earrings. So they look like this. They're like little space earrings. I have a couple of shirts and dresses that kind of are like Frizzle vibes. And the kids call me Miss Valdizzle because I'm a lot like Miss Frizzle and the fact that I'm like super weird. So anyway, these are these really cute earrings. The camera's not going to zoom in on them, but they're stars and planets. And then over here we've got uh, Saturn. So anyway, I was planning to wear these um, someday during class. I have a couple things I can think of that I can wear those with. So definitely not necessity, but super fun. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna pull out is something that's definitely needed. And these are uh, 12 two pocket poly folders and they are red. So one of the things that I really struggled with last year, sorry, there's a conversation going on in the hallway. One of the things I really struggled with last year was tracking absent work. Because of the pandemic, kids were in and out of school all the time, and it was really hard for me to figure out who was missing what. Um, and it, with 60 plus kids, because I am departmentalized, it just got really hard to track. So what I plan on doing with these is putting one red folder on each table group top and if a student is absent 
whoever is at that table group will put their paper, whatever, whoever's absent, put the paper that's on the empty desk inside of the red folder. This will be labeled as a catch-up folder. And so when the student returns, they can ask their team captain or whoever's there, hey, what did I miss yesterday? They can um, send them to the red catch-up folder where their papers that they missed for the day will be waiting for them. So I do a lot of interactive notebook work. I do a lot of um, things that need to be cut and glued into their notebooks. And so there's a lot of paper flow when it comes to that. So uh, this is definitely an essential item, something that I'm hoping will work next year. And then the last two things that I got from Amazon are more student rewards. So the kids love stickers. So I purchased a bunch of these little water bottle stickers. There's like 200 or something in here. 300, 300 stickers in here. So I thought that this could go in my dojo store as a reward. Um, they can purchase a sticker, like I would make this maybe 10 points. They can purchase a sticker. Um, and then I thought maybe making like a mystery box where they like put their hand in and then pick and then that's the one that they have. So, and then if they don't like it, they can just trade with someone else. And then another thing that I purchased for the same purpose are these giant, like mini brand erasers. So again, I will drop as many links as I can find down in the description, but there's things in here like cake, um, Santa, corn on the cob, pie, soccer, ping pong paddle, like there's all kinds of stuff in here. And I just know the kids love stuff like this. They love goofy little like erasers, like this one's a bowling pack. So anyway, I just thought that these would be super fun to again, put in my dojo store as like a reward they can purchase. Maybe these ones would be 15 dojo points. Again, they reach in, they grab one, whatever they get, they get and they don't throw a fit. This one is a little pumpkin. And then again, they can trade if they want, but um, I just thought that would be another fun prize. I haven't done like a prize box in a long time just because I find that uh, different opportunities in the classroom work just as good as prizes and gifts. So um, a lot of my dojo prizes are experiences or opportunities in my classroom. I'll do a whole nother video on my dojo store another day, but my friend Mandy also gave me a bunch of them because she purchased them last year for her fifth graders and then she was virtual the entire year. So she ended up giving these to me. Um, she's teaching first grade and I don't think first graders are as into stickers as fourth graders are. So anyway, she gave me a bunch of these stickers. Um, as you guys can see, there's just like tons in here. So I think I'm going to be set on stickers and stuff for the kids. So, so the very last thing that I purchased for this next coming school year, now this is not the only haul I'm probably gonna do. I'm gonna go out today and probably buy a few more things, but that was just a planner. And now that I have it in my hands and I've been using it, I don't think it's gonna work for teaching. And I'll tell you why. So this is a happy planner. It's from Joann's. I did get it on mega sale and it is the Disney princess edition. So the reason I, I love it because it's beautiful and cute, but it's not really practical for a teacher because of the size and amount of writing space. So you get these little squares for every day and where the squares would be plenty, I just don't have enough room to like write out standards and objectives. I would have to write down and that would really annoy me. So I think what I'm gonna do is just keep this uh, planner for my own personal use, keep it here in my office, use it to write down dates, keep it in my um, teacher bag so that if you know anything comes up at home or anything like that, I can write in it. Um, it was fairly um, inexpensive. So what I plan to do today is run to Home Goods and see if I can find just a cheap one that has lots of room to write things in so that I can put standards, learning targets, activities, um, school related stuff. I really don't think that I need like an Erin Condren planner anymore. I only teach one or two subjects um, per day, so I don't need a ton of space, just enough room to write my standards, my learning targets, and then any activities I'm planning on doing for the day. Um, I don't turn in lesson plans, so I really don't need like a huge planner. So I'm gonna do that today. But guys, that is everything in this first 
teacher haul for the school year. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, I will put as many links down in the description box below, and I hope you enjoy, and if you see anything you like, maybe you can grab it too. And I will see you guys in the next video.